Welcome everyone, this is Pine Leaf Needles and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Andang. Hey everybody. Terry Adwin. Hi hi. Maven. Hey y'all. And Carvette. That's your service. That's your families. And this week, we will head into the gaming news. Yes, we do have gaming news this week, where there were hints, or I should say more hints than before, since I think a lot of us already had guessed this, that Lotro something big is most likely an expansion. Yeah, I actually listened back to our episode where we talked about this. I think it was episode 160 when they were talking about this. And we actually did actually predict that it was going to be an expansion. We still weren't too confident about it, kind of like the developers aren't too confident about it right now. <laughs> but uh, it is good to know that Lotro's Something Big is an expansion, and yeah. I am going to have uh, Terry Adwin go ahead and read this first quote in this Lotro's Something Big article. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, you're welcome. Whenever you're ready, Terry. <laughs> I was the one person who didn't volunteer, so I didn't have it open. I, I have it up. I'll read go, it. Carve. Go for it. Right now, we have a two-and-a-half-year plan taking us to the end of 2018, and the reason we don't want to plan far beyond that is because we want to see where the players' heads are after that much time. We are currently focused on not only telling the epic story leading up to the gate, but what sort of happens beyond. We have already kind of hinted to the players that an expansion is on its way. I do not want to say too much about that because if I talk about the expansion now, we are still early enough that things may change and I do not want to disappoint the community. This is one of the reasons we don't usually talk about it. Not because we do not have long-term plans, just the opposite. We want to tell the epic story and we all know Mordor is coming. We want Mordor to satisfy not only the story buffs, but also make the experience of entering Mordor really epic because it is something other than the two halflings, something we didn't see much of. I mean, there's more to Mordor than just a couple of halflings. So that means then that this expansion is most likely going to feature a volcano. I would guess volcanoes and, and caves and, and large arachnids and, and <laughs> gates and, and like orc camps and wastelands full of all kind of nasty area effects and creatures that we don't even know about yet. I mean, who knows well, what could be out and there. And there's really nice parts of Mordor that we might see as well because... There's a place where all the food for all of Sauron's armies are being harvested. Any place wow. controlled by Sauron. Uh, really nice, I think. It's relative to Mordor. Yes, I'm definitely relative. The, the, but as the, far the, as the Mordor green goes. The of Nern are probably still going to be pretty dang dismal. I mean, look at, the, yeah. look at the harvest fields outside of Agmar, for crying out loud. That's true. They're growing crops, but it's a dismal place. I can't imagine that Mordor is going to be much different. Well, I think Nern might be a little bit better than that. But I think Nern it's... will be better than that as well. And it's near a volcano, so there should be rich soil and stuff like that as well. <laughs> so there might not right, be much sunlight, <laughs> but there will be rich soil. Um, muted there's also... gray grains. It's like, it's like muted waves of grain. There's also an opportunity, if they wanted to, to do a whole sea area because there's this huge sea inside Mordor that could be done. So there could be this you know, really large body of wa water inside Mordor as well if they want to go there. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities. I do want to mention that this was Severlin, Lotro's executive producer, who did say this. And this is being taken from Daddy's Lotro Guides. They had an interview recently with the developers for Lotro. I'm just glad that they're finally starting to talk about Mordor. <laughs> like Evil Swim. <laughs> <laughs> Our Dathalion in the chat does say, yeah, as Carp that's... pointed out, like Evil Swim, that's which awesome. is totally going to be the name. Evil Swim. That, that is be, that totally going to be the name. That. The Nern Sea is now like Evil it, Swim. Absolutely. <laughs> It's Lawson got, says wants... there's probably a town called Creepyville. Well, I mean, I, if I remember correctly, the books, most of the habitation in Mordor is along the outer mountain rim. Yeah. And that whole plain between that outer mountain rim and Mount Doom is just wasteland. So yeah. it would be quite interesting to see how they adapt that. Well, and if we, and we enter Mordor, if when that happens, the Black Gate is also starting to happen then there could be 
way less orcs inside Mordor than normal. Well, they'll be all concentrated to the north near the Black yeah, Gate. Exactly. Which way you go in. So you know, there's we'll probably um, go through Kirith Ungol. That's sneak, my guess as well. Across, sneak across the stairs. There are a lot of opportunities, though. I mean, they could they could do a lot of different things depending on where Update 19 is. Yeah, we have to go to Kirith Ungol simply because there is at least one prophecy that's going to be fulfilled there. Well, and well, we there was. A, we also had an oblique reference to it in this article. In yes, the in quotes. the next article, yeah. there is yeah. a, a very oblique reference to it, which we'll, yes. we'll get to. Um, we might as well mention uh, the DT's Shelob later on. Um, yeah, we'll get I more in depth into that. Later. I'm just, I'm just thinking. You know, if you thought Dunharrow was bad with war steeds, imagine oh the secret stare. <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> Could you imagine oh. riding off the top of the secret stare? Oh, I was just on gonna a war say, steed? Oh. Gonna, yeah, we'll probably have a deep. We'll probably have to run chickens there. Yeah. And you thought you thought was <laughs> bad? Goodness. Oh my goodness, that that'd be crazy. But um, but yeah, they are saying that they don't want to disappoint the community, which I think this is a much better approach, in my opinion, as far as communicating to the player base to say what they're planning, but to say that it's just a plan instead of saying nothing. And they are going to need to repeat that, you know, keep repeating that. But I agree with you. I think it's better for them to say it and keep repeating that than to not say anything. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, and so I'm I'm really glad about that. Um, I also, since we haven't talked about this yet, want to talk about the fact that they have a plan until the end of 2018. Oh, let me read the next section. Yes, that's what it yes, speaks Maven. To. Why don't you go ahead and lead into that? Cordovan does talk about the license. Because Andang and I actually had quite an in-depth conversation about this about a, about a year ago, I think. So yeah. I'm like, nee, 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 i got to read this. <laughs> okay, so Cordovan also talked about the license for Lotro. Quote, I would like to chime in on the licensing thing too. I can't get his voice down, but it is something that comes up on the forum quite a bit. What we do with Lotro is not particularly different from other video games that operate under a licensing agreement for intellectual property. For example, superhero games, superhero games, etc. They all have license holders, and Lotro is no different. Typically, these kinds of agreements are pieces of business that are not really disclosed to the public as part of the corporate business decision making that is involved with the creation and maintenance editor's edition of a game like Lotro. The Lotro community has historically had some particular sensitivity over the licensing agreement, but the agreement itself has basically always been a routine piece of business from the very start. So while we can understand that some folks like to talk about it on the forums, and as you said, doomsay, the reality is that it's just a private piece of business that has been routine lawyers getting together. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that was my edition. Ultimately, <laughs> if there was a... <laughs> uh, it's just like no the vision of that. Uh, um, yeah, okay. Buddha's chiming in. Shh, shh, shh. Ultimately, if there was a major issue ah, with a license, you guys <laughs> would probably find out about it because the game would no longer be operating after a certain point. <laughs> I like this. That cracked me up when he said that. Yeah. This is not a reality show. Quote, are they going to get kicked off the island thing? We're speculating month after month, year after year. It is basically just a routine piece of business, and we have no reason to think this won't be a continuation of that. I can't believe you stopped right as I did. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to drown you out. Oh, my man. God. He was like on cue. Anyway. <laughs> you said lawyer. You said lawyer. <laughs> Buddha this doesn't is... like lawyers? I don't know. I think that's, that must be it. I don't know. So can we say game over, doom and gloom? Doom and gloom doesn't I say, say yes. game over. <laughs> Instead of saying game over for Lotro, we can say game over doom for doom and gloom, I think. Because it's just a normal piece of routine business practice. This is by far the most open Turbine has ever been about this. I'm really glad that they did. What I really wish even more than this, though, because this is great, but what I wish even more than this is that they never talked about the license agreement in the first place. Most companies don't. I don't know why whoever ended up talking about it a long time ago decided to. I mean, it was yeah, that's a good point. you know a nice piece of transparency at the time, and it seems like that the date was a long time off. But now we've gone through you know several of these renewals, and it's just fueling the fire of these doomsayers, as Cord as they say in this quote. And I just every wish that time they... it comes up, oh, the game's gonna end in 2017. They're not gonna renew the license. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, 
There's and... no reason to think that they're not going to renew the license. People are still playing the game. Ergo, it's still worth relicensing. I'd like to point out how much a reversal this has been since before Monday. Before Monday, I would say that the Doom and Gloomers had somewhat of a reasonable argument. We had recent layoffs. We had uh, no information from Turbine, except for that the plans haven't changed, but no information on what was coming up, which normally we do. And so I think they had... They started to kind of begin to convince me a little bit that maybe Lotro is starting to wane a bit. But I think that these two inter parts of the interview that Daddy's Lotro guides had prove the exact opposite about that. It's night and day as far as I'm, I'm concerned. And this quote is the essence of that, where they're talking about how the license is just normal business practice and they have a plan until 2018. And the only reason that plan doesn't go beyond that is because it would be not very productive to plan beyond that because they want to react to players and things like that. But Turbine is planning for the game to go beyond 2018. That's really exciting for me. Yeah, I was really happy to read that. <laughs> to paraphrase what Grumps Gang in the chat says, Buddha tonight is playing the part of the Lotro forums. <laughs> 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 that's, that's oh, he thinks that's funny too. <laughs> that's, that's, funny. Funny. that's actually that's, that's actually pretty accurate because my experience <laughs> on the Lotro forums is you've got official people trying to talk and everybody else jabbering stuff that nobody wants to hear. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it, it's 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 people get excited about something and they get attached, and then when when there's even a hint of something that's going to go sideways with it, they're like, "No, oh, this guy is falling out!" Ah, like. Well, nice. I think yeah. that, especially with MMOs, it seems like that there's just this tidal wave of fear that takes over MMOs. You're going to take away times. my cookies. I and... have cookies with my friends Monday through Friday, and without my friends, I can't eat cookies. Can and I think that, that that's part of something that MMOs have to overcome, is that they are designed in such a way that they're not meant to last forever. At least a lot of them end up not lasting forever. That's just a fact, is that, you know, it might be a hundred years from now, but eventually there will be a day that Lotro ends. What I'm glad about this, though, no! is that... <laughs> what I'm glad about this, though, is that it's not anytime soon, and that Turbine's actually excited. Because if you remember, they were talking about how excited they were about the something big. We found out that the something big is an expansion. Turbine's excited about what they're doing, and from some of their quotes, because I actually went back and read them, it sounds like Turbine's more excited than pretty much anybody about what's coming up for Lotro. And to me, that is the most exciting part about this news, is just that Turbine is excited about what they're doing and what they're creating. And hopefully, you know, what is eventually delivered will be just fantastic, because... I think part of the problem is that our most recent expansion was Helm's Deep, and it was not... It was a very controversial expansion because of the class changes, because of the epic battles, and because of several other things, like the gating of the epic story being behind an expansion purchase. And I think that this is their opportunity to end... You know, this might not be the last expansion, but hypothetically, let's just say it is. I think this is an opportunity to have a fantastic, nice, last expansion for Lotro, even if it doesn't end up being the last one. And that's really exciting to me, that they are going to be having, potentially, that it's in the plans, another expansion for Lotro. And based on the recent raid and the most recent epic story and the recent content that we've gotten, I think that it has the potential to be the best expansion Lotro's ever had. Because I would argue that update 18 was one of the best updates we've ever had for Lotro. And so I'm really excited about this expansion. I'm probably more excited that Turbine's just finally communicating with player base openly about the license and just basically saying that it's normal business practice. Don't worry about it. We're not worried about it at all. Stop worrying about this community. They'll worry anyway. They but will worry. Always good. I yeah, think they're... they will worry anyway, yeah. but I think that they will be much less convincing to players who were not already worrying. Now, I, th awesome. I think that's a big deal. But go ahead, Pine. 
we also had Made of Lions who was discussing this, and he talked about the upcoming Epic Story, one of the things that made Update 18 what it was. Thank you so much, but we ha you haven't seen anything yet. I am just super excited about the things that are coming up. We do not try to rest on our laurels. We are always thinking about the next thing. I am very excited about what it is going to be. I saw a later discussion of people saying that Made of Lines is probably not wanting to talk about the update because he's uh, not wanting to spoil it and stuff like that. And I think that's very true. This is pretty much the most Made of Lions can say about the epic story without spoiling anything, just talking about how excited he is. So it's very yeah. good to hear that Made of Lions is really excited and saying that we haven't seen anything yet. I love that quote. All right. Is there anything else on part one from the rest of the interview that was not covered in this article that anyone wants to talk about? Okay, Pine Leaf. Well, I mean, oh, go ahead. Carl. Sorry, I was I was gathering my thoughts. They they were kind of wandering around the desk. Um, <laughs> reading Made of Lions, talking about the epic story to come, really was was a was a booster for me this week because I have not touched my main Carvette since I did my epic binge <laughs> to get caught up. <laughs> and he's sitting at 103, kind of like on the fields of Pelennor, right there where Aragorn says, stuff is to come. And I'm like, uh, I can't go back. But now, I, you know, I'm, I'm actually motivated now to go back and, and pick him up to get him up to level five, to get some gear so that when the <laughs> expansion <laughs> comes out, <laughs> I can just roll into it, you know. I was actually getting some good advice this morning when I was streaming. So I'm like, all right, I can I can probably motivate myself to do that, you know. Yeah, and honestly, Carve, this news has motivated me as well. I think I'm more excited about Lotro now than I have been since the since probably before Helm's Deep. Because there was all that negative news after that, and then there were layoffs, and then there, you know, was just a continuation of this just bad news that continued, and we hadn't had another big expansion after that. That was kind of the move away from doing these, you know, big expansion events, and so I'm super excited about what the future is for Lotro now moving forward. And it's not just the expansion, it's just the fact that Turbine is so openly talking about how excited they are for what they're making. And that really gets me excited, because I think part of it is Minas Tirith and all of Gondor is different, but it's still kind of similar to how Rohan was. Now we're going to be moving on to something completely different that we haven't touched since Angmar, and possibly even ever, because I have a feeling Mordor is going to be different than Angmar. And what better be? I'm, I'm really excited about that. Well, yeah, I don't remember there being any volcanoes in Angmar. So yeah, but it's, you know, that evil type <laughs> know, zone. Know, know, type know, thing. Yeah, all right. Let's, <laughs> I think it's time to go to part two of the interview where there is this possibility of having yearly raids, which is sounds something that the raiders will really like. <laughs> yeah, yes, Pine Leaf. Um, in the interview, Severlin, Lotro's executive producer, does talk about the possibility of yearly raids. Severlin says, What we are currently looking at is, and I'm going to say this because it is wildly going to change, so I know that people are going to hate me when we actually don't do this, but we are thinking once a year, looking at the participation, and maybe once a year, maybe once every 14 months, to do another raid <laughs> so that players can experience content in that manner. It's a lot of maybes. So, if you want to see raids, get out and raid. It's that simple. <laughs> Absolutely. And what was interesting is, I don't remember if this was in the interview or if it was in forum conversations, because I've been just absorbing so much news this week, but... Turbine does talk about how basically because raiding attendance was really high and people seem to really like the most recent raid for Lotro, that's why they're looking at doing more raids. It's because players actually enjoyed the most recent raid and actually have been doing it. And there are some loot issues that I know a lot of players have, but players have actually been doing the raid, which is why Turbine's now looking at doing more raiding. And that also kind of goes along with an expansion. I'm wondering if 
it's because of the raid that they're now planning to do an, they're like well we're doing a raid we might as well do an expansion as well or if it's the other way around we're doing an expansion we might as well do a raid or if they just decided upon them both separately which come first expansion or the raid <laughs> <laughs> which come first expansion or the raid <laughs> But yeah, I did uh, ask Turbine, and we sh uh, Cordovan replied back in an email that we should be having another raid in 2017. That's their current plan. Um, and we should go ahead and mention the rest of the stuff. So Dr. Octothorpe then talks about the return of the raiding population. And whoever wants to read that can go ahead and do that. Pineleaf. I want to add, we are happy, delighted to see how the rating community in Lotro has come back to life. We are very aware of the fact that we want to give the rating community things to do often enough that they do not feel like all the work they put into this raid was all for nothing. We sort of put a ball back into the air even if we don't know exactly what cadence we are going to have, the goal is to have the ball bouncing in the air. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, that's kind of going into talking about how they were, the, the way the question was, was about players feeling like that, you know, doing all this grinding was all for naught because there wouldn't be more raids for a while. And so they just have this gear that they, they don't really need. But Turbine is actually looking at the player base and saying, hey, you guys are actually enjoying raiding, and so we're going to keep bouncing the ball and putting it back in the air. So I think that's great news. Well, I like I like that not only is the player base responding to the idea that they want to do it, and they're doing what was thrown out there, um, the story is now at places where big epic raids yeah. are warranted. I mean... War bands made sense for Rohan, even though it wasn't raid per se. Um, actually, it's not. Um, I can't think of anything else. Well, the epic battles were what Rohan had. Yeah, yeah, and epic battles kind of fit more for what Helm's Deep was as opposed to the classic raid. I yeah. think. Um, that being said, though, we're back into a part of the story where raids make sense. And so what we're seeing, in, in my opinion, is the whole field of dreams thing where if you build it, they will come. Um, <laughs> except if it's a raid, it's more like a field of screams. But um, <laughs> when it comes right down to it, you know, they asked, Turbine delivered, and it was good content, and people play it, and they like it, and so they want more. And so it's it's like, yeah, let's, let's roll this ball some more. Keep it up in the air. And then, can I, can I read the next one? Yeah, go for it, Carve. Raid of Lions, Dr. Octothorpe and Pinion tease about the possibility of a raid with a certain spider. Maid of Lions, and from a story perspective, there is certainly a lot of fertile ground ahead for the possibilities of a very challenging raid mechanics and villains. Dr. Octothorpe, dark webbed enemies, I'm not going to say more. Pinion, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> Get fuck, you piece of filth! Well, I've been... <laughs> Well, I've been joking about that raid for at least a year. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, at least I've been joking yeah, about man. that for a long yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like our int play, essentially. It's just like teasing about <laughs> the Sheila raid. Yeah, teasing about Sheila raid. All right, Dr. Octothorpe does then talk about the raid loot. And Maven, can you read this one? I don't think I'm on the page. I, I read Ooh. one already. All right, oh. we're going back around, but uh, I, I, I got, got, go got for it. it. Oh, I got Terry's it. got it. Terry's got, Terry's got, got it. it. I got there it. We, go. uh, we definitely have been monitoring feedback on raid loot and things like that, and I think going forward, this raid was the first raid that we have done in a long time, and when it came to designing the loot for it, that was certainly a factor. Now that we have some good feedback and we are going to get a lot more practice, maybe, don't overpromise. When it comes to the gradient with which we give out rewards, I think we might be amping that up a little bit. I do not want to get too much into specifics now. Even for the upcoming update for Update 19, we will actually be sharing some of that info on Palantir. And Severlin does add that we'll eventually be on the Bulwer test server and potentially probably on live eventually at some point as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After tweaks and edits and, and adjustments mm -hmm. and everything else. Right. I mean... 
The idea of having good scaled gear that doesn't put us into that HD bloat that we had, but at the same time makes it good for those who really want to spend the time to earn it. Well, yeah. I mean, we've had gear bloat issues since after the Mines of Moria expansion. Well, where I essentially... thought it's, it's Helm's Deep that really went crazy with it, though. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I thought that I thought that Rohan went to started going. I think I was complaining about it a little bit then, but you're right. Helm's Deep would yeah, give it to yeah. the roof. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, Rohan is not as bad. You pick up level 65 gear, level 75 gear, and you go into Rohan, and you're all right. You pick up level 85 gear, you cross the line into Helm's Deep, and the first <clears> quest <throat> reward gives you something that's better, and you're like, what the heck? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All that hoop bold work. Don't pick yeah. anything up, and, and, you know, you don't pick... You do all the grinding for height bold, and then you cross the river, and you go splat. Yeah. Or you yeah. have a chance to pick up quest gear. Yeah. Right. And then if you're a Bjorning, you don't even get the opportunity to get quest gear. <laughs> That's what my Bjorning is 85 right now. He's sitting there in Snowborn going, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And later on in the interview, Severlin talks about plans to change DPS for the Hunter and Burglar classes. <laughs> Nobody else talks. Okay, we'll continue right. on. But the bad news... <laughs> That so, is that fellowship maneuvers, they're not they don't have any immediate plans on those. Well yes, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and read yeah. this, I suppose. Uh Severlin does say Hunter DPS, yes. Burglar DPS, yes. Burglar survivability, yes. Fellowship maneuvers, not at this time. <laughs> but maybe When I read that bit... Hunter DPS thing, I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll get excited when I see it. <laughs> yeah. But they do say maybe a little bit later, but right now we are working on other things and we haven't touched maneuvers because that is a bigger task, I think, to balance those. Which I think is true because they really haven't been scaling right ever, have they? They scaled right up to about 65. And then they're kind of pointless after that. Except for the occasional healer power bump. And even then, it's not great. Yeah. Now is 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 this is the maneuver a static number based on what you pick or is it like some kind of a function of the actual damage of the weapon you're using? That's what I've always wondered and I've never bothered to try and figure it out. I think it's just whatever you pick that's like the defined amount. Hmm, okay. Well then yeah, that those tables are updated. And you can maybe. get a bonus based on racial traits. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And, and, and whatever. Burglars get a bonus based on their ranged. Or yeah, their ranged whatever if they happen to have something okay. in range. And so Severin... there's probably calculations that need to be justificated. Yeah. Severin does say he thinks these changes will be in update 19. So. Hmm. That should be good. I mean, that's not that far away. So I think it's a bit more reliable obviously we'll have to wait and see if what they change on dps is what we want them to change as we've well, had issues with that detail. with this team but hopefully they will be looking at this because i think this is a major as far as like short-term stuff that needs to be fixed as soon as possible i think burglar and hunter dps are pretty high on that list um so burglar i think in particular burglar in particular and so I think that that's really good news that they're actually going to be looking at this and trying to at birds. least start to fix it. Yeah. And Dr. Octothorpe does then confirm that Update 19 is still planned for release this fall. And that's pretty much all the interesting stuff from the interview I found. Does anybody else want to talk about anything from it? Um, I... I, the reason I wasn't on the page was that I was reading the interview about there's they talk about lag. We yeah. don't need to talk about it here, but um, if you're interested, go look at the Dowdy interview because they do explain the lag thing, and I it's, I mean I found it informative. Yeah, I think that it's it's interesting. I think the reason I didn't include that is because while they say they think they've found it. They've thought they've found it however many times. Right. Yeah. And so I'm right. just tired of reporting. Well, and they go them. through all of the things. You know, it's no one particular thing. I mean, they mm -hmm. say several times it's like a many headed hydra, you know, that they mm -hmm. chop one head off and it's something else. And then it depends. It's all, it seems contextual, you know, like 
they were saying that the raid, the lag that people are seeing in the new raid has nothing to do with Minas Tirith, you know, it's raid specific, so it's just, it sounds like, um, I mean, I'm like reading that going, oh my god, what a huge headache for Turbine, but I, yeah. it's informative for me, because, like, for example, I guess they're, you know, their fast travel now, now that they have out for after Battle Minas Tirith is so that we can bypass the lag in pre-Battle Minas Tirith, you know, you don't have that same lag issue, I guess, in post-Battle Minas Tirith, anyway, it's, so, it's interesting, read it but i understand yeah. why you didn't put it in the article <laughs> well and i actually recommend to listen to the audio files i know a lot of people don't want to do that but it is much more accurate as far as the transcript goes so i, I do recommend listening to the audio if you have the time um also in part two they discussed old raid loot and basically how they're not going to be able to change that because they have priorities elsewhere and they also talked about how li changes might be coming sometime later, but not in the near future. Um, but but that might oh, be happening later on. What's the deal with old raid loot? The deal with old raid loot is people talking about how doing... If I remember right, it's talking about how doing older raids didn't allow it to be as good as the current stuff. Oh, okay. And so people were basically wanting uh, yeah. the older raid loot to be improved. But older raid... Uh, I, I don't understand that because the old raid loot would be for lower levels, right? Yeah, so here's the... Uh, You're talking about like running the, the, running the scalable instances. Oh, oh the scalables. Yeah. At here's 105, the, uh, but getting stuff that's not as good as what you get when you run. Oh, yeah, the there new is raid. this little thing, like, for example, in Skirmish Race, which is dropping level 100 loot, so maybe things like that. So maybe other uh, raids are doing the same thing? Well, maybe. here's what Severlin says oh, okay. uh, from the quote. Severlin says, That's a great question. One of the ongoing things that an MMO does is it invalidates old loot as you go forth. What we don't want to do is make the loot of old instances so good, that is, that it's better than the new stuff edited in, so that if so, if you are going to spend your time, do you... This is hard to read because of the way that it's transcribed. Do you do the new raid or the old instances? Uh, gotcha. If we... If we make the old instances loot good enough to compete with the new raid, then players tend to do the old instances they know instead of the new raid. So part of doing new content there is a constant upgrade of loot. So we have to be careful, and he continues on to talk about the loot as well as far as revamping old content and all sorts of other stuff. Well, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, you want to put your newest toys and your newest content because you don't want that group that's been running Brad Golder or whatever, you know, grade 17 billion times. Yeah, we can do all stun off with our eyes closed. And you don't want your newest shiny trinkets and something that people have down pat that you want them to explore and you want them to have rewards for beating that new set of nasty raid mechanics that's, you know, three giant mama kills that will stop you flat if you blink funny. <laughs> right, and not everybody agrees with that philosophy, but that is Turbine's current philosophy, at least Severland's philosophy, so... Well, I can understand that. I mean, yeah, I definitely can too. I'd say that that's fairly standard in MMOs, to be honest. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, you the, don't the best loot comes from the most difficult to newest stuff. It just makes sense. Well, because that's because you don't want to spend a year making a raid that no one runs. That's probably what real. caused us to stop doing raids in the first place. Is probably something like that. Honestly, it, that was part of it. Part of it was the fact that there were epic battles added to the game. Well, yeah, there was that crazy epic battle thing. Or mm -hmm. the battles that shall not be named. Let's head into the store sales. <laughs> the battles that shall not be named. Well, real quick, Pineleaf, I just want to say that I am so glad that Turbine is finally communicating with us and doing so on a site that's actually fairly new. As far as I can tell, Daddy's Ultra Guide started in March, and Turbine's already more than willing to be able to talk to them and have this whole full interview with all these different devs and I think that's absolutely fantastic. I'm really glad that Cordovan is communicating with the community and I'm way more excited than I was before Monday of this week. I thought that this was fantastic. It raised my spirits 
and I'm just looking forward to whatever's next for Lotro. And, you know, Lotro might end before Turbine thinks it does, but I'm okay with that. Turbine's very excited about what they're doing, and I'm going to be excited with them, I think, until I have reason to Would think Would you otherwise. stop talking about Lotro ending? I mean, really. <laughs> 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 okay, start playing Billy Boyd's last goodbye. You're so right, we need to just say... Now. Come on. Game over, doom and gloom. <laughs> Let's head don't, to don't the make, I was like, don't make me start reaching for my copies of Adventures <laughs> in Middle Earth yet. <laughs> Although I don't have them. I will. <laughs> Let's head into the store sales. Terry, what's on sale this week? Okay, this week's free sample is a Max Morel and Power Scroll times one. Use coupon code more of both, one time per account. Also, 25% off some milestone skills, hurried returning and expedient traveler, riding traits, simple rally horn, uh, for a limited time, still 25% off region pack for Anorian through the 4th of September, which is tomorrow, so by the time this podcast comes out on everything else, it'll be over with. Uh, limited time, tier 17 stat tomes through September 8th. Uh, double points in stores September 2nd through the 11th and not listed as part of the store sales but since we don't have community events still this week I wanted to mention Farmer's Fair is live through the 15th Yeah. and we have a tablecloth horse like a we literally cloth. this time have a tablecloth horse <laughs> it's, like, it's like a literal <laughs> it I is, mean the least yeah. they could have done was plaid. put a picnic basket on the back it's you like know what plaid I mean? flannel it's, man it's awesome <laughs> not only that but they have shoulders and a cloak to match yes it's like I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay <laughs> <laughs> it's great actually so, a lumberjack check would have been even more interesting at least but you can dye it to make it a lumberjack check. That's true. I see people dri driving by in that horse, and I'm like, really? You really had to get that horse? <laughs> I actually think that the horse is kind of ugly. Um, but I definitely am going to pick up the cloak and shoulders. Okay. Then let's head into our Locho Players News, which Locho Players News is brought to us by the Harn Kager Games. Yes, and Carve, if you which, can read which the one, one on we... September 3rd, which is the dwarf one. Okay. <clears throat> Come on, lads! Hot and Kegener is coming! Now is the time to show the free folk how the dwarves compete! By our wits, by our might, by our stones! Mine from the very heart of the mountains! <laughs> Grab your blades and axes! Take up poles and poems! Ugh, I don't know about that! Unless it's a rousing tale of dwarven bravery! Oh, drink to that! <laughs> Learn more at harnkegergames.simplesite.com That's H-A-R-N-K-E-R-Games.simplesite.com <laughs> September 5th through 11th, 2016. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we... you, Carl. Yes. <laughs> we had episode 8 of Locho Academy After School, where... We had our usual monthly get-together, plus we had a new arrival. Yay, Sam Swindus joined the cast. Da -da -da. Yeah, that's fantastic. Then let's enter Tales of the Free Folk, episode 20, The Bridge of Hobbit Doom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't know what has happened yet because I haven't had a chance to go back and listen to it so ending was giving me some like very brief spoilers but I was like I'm gonna have to listen to it hopefully I'll have some time you since I got my day off the ending summaries come on <laughs> well I know that a certain dwarven adventurer was left behind so but you know if you're not there that's what happens well there should be a whole uh, backstory this coming Tales of the Free Folk that should explain everything that's uh, been going on with not only Carve, but also how uh, Maven departed the show. So, should all be good. Alright, then let's head into Embers of Hope, Prologue 1. It all fades to black. Oh, no, wait. The first prologue fades to black? Apparently, Pineleaf. That lore master is just not doing a good job keeping that fire going. Yeah, apparently not. Then let's head into Critter's Journey number 38. 
a main dish of Corsairs and Limbus. You're kidding me. <laughs> it's critters. It yeah. is critters. <laughs> I guess you can't say anything more than that. It's pretty much standard fare for critters. Right. And there's Corsairs a and Limbus. Horse. Mr. Ed? Yeah. Horses, all horses, of course, of course. Let's head into Poems of the Pine. <laughs> Miss of Vanduine, which is book six of volume three. When the battle was done, our dreams were haunted by memories, terrors, and mysterious visions. As we slept, a summons set our next road across the mountains, misty peaks. We gather the ghosts to gain the sword and cross the peaks to the pristine woods. They sent us to find the fellowship's path to find the darkness that endangered their quest. Down river we roar, roamed near Roja's edge in search of for the sight of a sinister beast. The beast had fallen but its burden lurked in the bogs, barrens, and battlefields near. We searched for clues of the servant of ill, then drove the darkness away. But Nona was hurt by the Nazgul's wake, till cured in the care of the ill. Great job, Piney. Thanks. Awesome. Then we'll head into the next entry of Piney's Pictorial Primer to Skirmishing the Battle in the Tower. Hey, you need to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he put that up after I did the show notes, which is how he tacked it on the end, because Poems of the Pine is supposed to be the last thing in the Lotra Players News. It's all good. We can roll with it. All right. A little bit of flavor. You probably also need to stop doing this skirmish, Pine, because I'm sure you've done it a billion times now. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. The number of times I've done the skirmish recently, and now I think I have to rescue a certain ranger at Nurse Gashu next. Yeah, and Ooh, that guy. Mm -hmm. Then you only have one more skirmish after that, right? No, actually, rescue is the last rescue one. Rescue is the last one. I, I didn't know if you had done is, Storm yeah. yet or not. So. Yeah, I did Storm back at the end of last year. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You did. Yes. Cool. Well, you're almost done, Pine Leaf. And then they'll make a ton of changes, and then you get to do it all over again. Well, there <laughs> is that little detail. <laughs> well, maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, these are all fantastic, right. Pine Leaf. Really do appreciate you doing these. Thank you. And now, Maven, do you have a question this week, or is that blank? I do not. Message? Sorry, I meant to put that in there, but I figured we were going to be talking so much about the update that we would bypass the question. Yeah, our new right. player question was, what's coming next to Lotro? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Duh. right. Then let's head into our week in Lotro. Anything, what were you up to? Well, I helped Rohan prep for Helm's Deep by taking these large barrels of stuff and then taking it all the way there and then them telling me that we really only needed like this one thing out of this barrel. Thanks for not inspecting the metal first. Now go back and get some other barrels for us so that we can do this again. <laughs> uh, Rohan. Go ahead. Prepping for Helm's Deep is really kind of annoying. <laughs> it was fun the first time, but looking back on it now, it's like, wow, I really did this back then? <laughs> this is kind of frustrating. But It made you carry the practice dummies too yep yep did you I, see the I video of the guy who carried the practice dummy from, from all the way um, to Bray yeah, that's to Bray. great <laughs> that's great <laughs> I'm like, why because I can that's some dedication brilliant so Carv what did you do this last week been super busy, but um, not doing Lotro stuff until this morning. I got up because work had me up anyway. So around 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I logged in, started streaming my free-to-play adventures, running around Moria's Flaming Deeps. Um, got back to the 21st Hall and decided, I think I just want to run an instance for this snazzy Moria Loremaster robe. 
And so I did. I was like, I am completely running this instance for the row because I got this cool staff. And I was like, I can have cosmetic staffs now. This staff is fancier than my staff. But I need a fancier robe to go with it. I need to do some Lotro paper dolls. Ooh, that's a I cool Moria stat. I was, I was like, Terry's going to approve. I was like, I need <laughs> to run an instance in Moria simply because I want to get this robe to go with that staff to make me look like a cool princely lore master as opposed to the adventuring rough around the edges lore master that I normally look like. So I ran Grand Stairs with a couple folks in the chat. We had fun. The Guardian fell off. We <laughs> died. It was great. You know, it's the Grand Stairs. Um, but that was pretty much my week in Lotro because I didn't have time to play much else. Um, but Maven, I'm sure you had a lot more things going on at Lotro. Oh, well, let me tell you. Well, first of all, I successfully, as you guys know, I, I interrupted the show last week from the from the from the road, I think we were in Yes, Marie. thank you. Um, and <clears throat> managed to get my Crosser of Roads title, which was awesome. We had 12 chickens. We only lost one, but it was a sad, sad loss. It was at <laughs> Ben Harn, so it was really close to the end of the run. And a snapper turtle respawned right on top of the chicken. So it was like, oh, oh, man. You know, yeah, we had that happen in girls, too, with one of the lynxes on the high moors. You know, we lost, lost our chicken that way. Um, then I... Um, I <laughs> I, believe, I, I watched the effects of what I believe is a temperance movement sweeping the Shire a at the Farmer's movement? Fair. Yes. Yes. There are not very many drunk hobbits at the Farmer's Fair this year. And I'm telling I you, that. I did this on several characters, and it takes forever. Those guys stay so sober. <laughs> it's just depressing. Maybe they're so <laughs> drunk they didn't even show up to the fair. Well... Maybe oh, see, the really I drunk think, ones I didn't, I guess. Is, I don't know. After being accused a few times, the drunk ones sober up real fast so they don't get caught because they don't want to get nailed. Maybe they're just really good at it, yeah. Yeah, they they're really good. Like They've they been practicing to. all I mean, these was, years, yeah. I, You know, and I just thought maybe it was like, oh, the RNG's not being kind to me. But it not only happened on different characters, but on on different days. I mean, it's just like, oh, this yeah, is if, ridiculous. If I recall, anyway, so that, there's so that happened. a game mechanic where if too many incorrect accusations are made, the drunk ones sober up, and they don't get drunk again for a long time. Oh, that could be, be you know, because I've seen a lot of people making false that. accusations. Yeah. I'm like, what's yeah. the deal? Why are they? I remember so reading people doing about that. That, going, that could oh, be. Brutal. That's interesting. Yeah. So I need to go smack the players that are falsely accusing. <laughs> um, and then last night, I had yeah. the best time. We had kind of kinny pickup games last night. You know, sort of like whoever showed up in the kin uh, chat sort of was like, let's go do X, Y, Z. Cool. And there were enough of us at, at Level Cap that we, you know, went to do the featured instance, which was Stone Height. And um, so we had a couple of different groups do it, and I ended up – I, it was great. I ended up on Maven, my lore master, with two burglars doing stone height. It was awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We went. I was just shocked at how fast we went through it. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was really, really fun. It was really, really fun. So it was. It was. You know, all around, I'd say it was a pretty good week, other than those sober hobbits. Oh, and I also <laughs> fished stuff out of the pond for some stupid hobbit that keeps throwing your stuff into the pond. I mean, come on, lady. Uh -huh. Anyway. All right, so let's see. Where's Terry? I don't see Terry on here. That's what I was wondering about. That's because I... My water heater decided to stop working Monday, so I haven't really played the show this week. Mm -hmm. I had nothing highlight-worthy. You've been doing real-life questing. Yeah, I've been doing real-life stuff, and it's it's not highlight-worthy either. Okay. It's probably not fun, right? I mean, you'd rather be back no, in Lotro, I'm sure. Least, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd rather resolution. be doing anything else, honestly. She's probably gained like two levels this week, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've gained a bunch of gray hairs this week. That's what I've gained. <laughs> those are debuffs, uh, yeah. my friend. Those are debuffs. <laughs> no, those are crowns of glory. <laughs> oh, okay. I should actually say they're buffs, given the fact that I'm, you know, like got more than three gray hairs. Um, so, Pineleaf, I guess you're going to wind it up. Let's take us home, Pineleaf. How was your week? All right. I'll begin with the Academy field trip where we started questing in the Misties. This is my group with Sons Winde, and we killed a lot of bears, we placed some signs, and we battled a giant or two. And on 
Creek and Hollow. sometimes four, right? Didn't you guys have like up to four at one point? I think there was one time where yeah, we were fighting one of the elite masters and then some company keeps on coming in and all that stuff. Yes, th those giants were persistent. Sounds about a good afternoon in the Misty Mountains. Right. And then on Creek Hollow during my... Sunday skirmishes, I was doing raids, and we did a tuck bro raid, and during the first raid that we did that night, I managed to get three Starlit Crystals in one run. I'm like, what is this? Wow. I mean, usually, I'm lucky to get one Starlit Crystal in three runs. So this time, I got three Starlit Crystals in one run. It was like... So and I didn't realize it got one until the, the second RNG one. all the RNG luck this week, apparently. <laughs> yeah, go. apparently so. I'm sure that it'll be another month before I get another one. <laughs> Actually, I can't say it'll be another month because I know another one of my another one of my characters while doing a solo battle in the tower also got a start at Crystal. Well, you, know, you don't mean to brag or anything, Pine Leaf. <laughs> continue, <laughs> continue, finally. <Whack. laughs> and on Marlin, I was prepping to do some skirmishes, which I think this is the one who got that last start at Crystal. I was prepping to run some 104 skirmishes to try to get to 105, and one of our show's fans presented himself to me and gave me a level 105 Warden Shield that I could use as soon as I level. Wow. That's awesome. E yes, because I was wondering what I was going to do for a shield. Well, I don't have any trouble with that now. And that concludes my week in Lotro. Well, now so... you can go surfing with Aerithird, Pineleaf. Now that you got your shield. Nice. We currently have 24 supporters on Patreon, <laughs> and if you'd like to join this illustrious raid of players and help support local players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice, or even a guest with us here on Locho Players News. We did not have any featured comments or emails this week, but if you'd like to email us, you could email us at podcast at lotroplayers.com. You could also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Locho Players at Locho Players, Andang at Andang LP, Carvette at Carvette LP, Maven at Token Maven, Pineleaf at Pineleaf Mules, and Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin. The Players Alliance has five live shows every Monday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News. On Thursdays at 9.30 p.m.-ish U.S. Eastern Time, we have XP Quest. Every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Locho Players News. Every other Saturday after Locho Players News, we have Tales of the Free Folk. On the last Saturday of each month at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Locho Academy After School. So you can join us for our live shows at lotoplayers.com slash live. Thank you, everyone, for listening. This is Pineapple Mules reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>